right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2023 Honda Civic Si. Up front is a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four and down below is a six speed manual transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this Civic Si because I've driven three Civics of this generation. This is the 11th generation of Civic. However, I've never done the SI. This is brand spanking new. And so I'm excited to see how it holds up against previous SIs, as well as just my general thoughts on Honda's performance sedan. But if you would like a video of your vehicle featured here on the channel, you can head on over to my website, zachpradle.com submit. It's a quick and easy submission form. I come to you and you would get a video just like the one you're watching now of this Civic Si. But let's get back to that 1.5 liter turbo. Well, Honda uses this engine in a lot of different applications. We've seen it in the CRV. We've seen it in the regular Civic. We've seen it in the Accord. However, they've tweaked and tuned this engine a a little bit to give it 200 horsepower. And so let's see if it's worth it. All right, let's see. That's a lot of fun. It definitely gets up and goes, which I love to see from a Civic Si. However, like the previous generation, there is a little bit of rev hang when you do shift. You might have heard that. The car actually purposefully rev hangs just a little bit to help out newer drivers, which is great for newer manual drivers, but for someone more experienced, it does feel a little bit odd. Now there is a modification that you can do to help prevent this, but out of the box, it does have a little bit of that factory rev hang. do still get that little just quarter of a second of rev hang and that is somewhat annoying like i said paired to it is a six speed manual transmission now this is not the only way you can get a six speed in the civic you can also get it at the base model you can get it on the touring and of course the civic type r comes with a manual standard as well but this is a close ratio manual transmission so it is going to drive a little bit different than the standard manual civic and i really really like it it has a very notchy very honda feel to it and i've always praised honda for making the best shifters in the market and that holds true with this civic si i am really really enjoying rowing through the gears here in this car i also do get auto rev matching which is a godsend and makes me feel way cooler cooler than I deserve to feel. Now, last but not least, this car is front wheel drive. Honda currently does not offer any Civic in all wheel drive. And I think that's a corner of the market that they're missing. However, this car does have a limited slip differential up at the front, which cannot be found on the standard Civic. And I really, really enjoy that extra sportiness that Honda gave it. So how does it feel to actually drive the 2023 Civic Si? It's great. It's a really, really fun, really thorough, really enjoyable experience. Like I said with that shifter, it's bang on along with the clutch. Steering is exactly how I would want it. Throttle response is good. You do get some boost lag. When you floor it, it doesn't spool up immediately, but that's going to be a consequence of any turboed engine. So not really the Civic Si's direct fault. Visibility is pretty good. Modern cars aren't amazing. So it's on par with other vehicles in this segment. With that stuff out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have two main gauges. Off to the left is my tachometer. Off to the right is my speedometer. And I do get these nice red accents for the Civic Si, which I am pleasantly enjoying. On the steering wheel on the left, I have my skip track volume and scroll wheel for that gauge cluster screen we just talked about. And off to the Right, I have my adaptive cruise control settings. This does have Honda Sensing, which is a fantastic system. The overall look and feel of the steering wheel is pretty nice. It does have red stitching on it, which adds that sportiness, and there's a lot of red accents around the interior. For instance, off to the left, we do have our climate control vent, again, outlined in red. I do have a gauge dimmer switch and my bubble button and traction control off. The bubble button will turn off your safety features and Honda Sensing and things like that. Moving on to the door, I do have this 
nice red insert on the door card, as well as my power mirrors, power locks, and power windows. Moving into the center, we do have a little infotainment screen. I've gone over this in plenty of other Honda Civic reviews. Unfortunately, the SI doesn't get any extra or exciting pages for the center display. I wish that I would have gotten like sport screens or something of that nature. However, here's the backup camera, which is really nice. Honda is fantastic at giving you multiple different views for the backup camera, which I really, really like. And that carries on across their entire lineup of vehicles. Then we do have this really long vent going from left to right in the interior. Again, red accents found in here, just to remind you that you're driving the SI and not a normal Civic. So I really like that added touch. And then we do have the climate controls. What's absent from the climate controls is dual zone. The Civic Si does not have dual zone climate, which I think was quite the misstep from Honda. My $21,000 Mazda 3 has dual zone climate, and yet this $30,000 Civic Si does not. That doesn't really make sense with me all that much. However, I like how clean and simple the climate controls are laid out. And then moving down the center console, we do have two USB inputs. One is an actual input for the media. The other is just a charger, 12 volt outlet, little cubby, and then we come to the center console. Off to the left, I do have my different drive mode. So I have normal, sport, and individual. Individual is gonna be customizable. Then I have my automatic start, stop, on and off, my power parking brake, and my brake hold. Then we have the shifter itself off to the right. This is my first time utilizing this shifter in the Civic Si, and I love it. It looks and feels like the older Si's, which I love. It really reminds me of like older RSX's and Integra's, and of course, like the EP3 and the EK Civic, all of those fantastic cars from my youth. I really, really feel that with the shift knob. So this has to be one of my favorite parts of the interior is this throwback shift knob that Honda decided to put in. Then we do have cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And unfortunately, just the same as all the other Civics from this generation that I've reviewed, the 2023 Honda Civic Si fails the big friggin' bottle test. <laughs> Then we do get a little center console and the seats. The seats are specific to the SI. Obviously they have SI stitched in them, but their bolsters are a lot more aggressive than what you would find in standard Honda Civics. If you have trouble getting in and out of the seat, these chairs might not be for you, but they do hug you a little bit closer. Gives the car that extra sporty feel which I really, really love. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2023 Honda Civic Si, and it's great. The back space is so phenomenal. I've ranted and raved about it in the other base models, touring, whatever it's been. These back seats are fantastic. My knees don't have a prayer of hitting the seat in front of me. Headroom is pretty good. The hatch does have just a little bit more but honestly not bad, I'm 5'11", I'm not a small guy, and I fit back here really, really well. This has the best back seat of any vehicle in this segment that I've tested so far. I don't get any vents back here, which I would have liked to have seen, and I do have a center console, two cup holders in there, but that's pretty much it. However, let's hop out now, we'll take a quick look at the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, around the back of the Civic Si, I do have a hold button here on the key fob, as it is slightly hailing. All right, that's a first for my reviews. Anyway, in the trunk, we do have a ton of trunk space, which is absolutely fantastic. Love to see that. I don't get a spare tire, however, which I, I really wish that it did. However, not the worst thing in the world. Nothing really too crazy to write home about elsewhere, except for this, this ice coming down from the heavens. Um, but that's the trunk space of the Civic Si. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and this is finished in platinum white pearl, which is a $455 option. The main reason I wanna point that out is because this vehicle is not finished in championship white. Honda reserves championship white for the Civic Type R. However, the colors are so close. Here's the new Type R in championship white. Here's this car. 
I mean, you can be the judge. I think the exterior is styled really, really well, especially on the sedan. This generation of Civic, I prefer the sedan over the hatchback, which is contrary to my beliefs with a lot of other generations, but it's just simple. One downside, however, though, is that the Civic Si does not get fog lights, which I would have liked to have seen after spending the money. But with all of that being said, let's get on to my final thoughts. What do I think driving the Civic Si from 2023, this brand new body style. Well, I have to say that I've really, really enjoyed it, and I don't think that that's any mystery. The one major downside, and really the only downside I see with this car is that little rev hang from the factory. Now, there are modifications to change this, but out of the showroom floor, it is gonna be a little rev hangy, and that was a little bit disappointing to see. But I wanna compare this car to the older Civic SIs. How does it drive compared to those cars? Completely different. It is a different animal and a different beast, but this doesn't feel as high strung as those older cars. The older cars were naturally aspirated and had to rely on extra valves and high compression to make good power. Well, this with the turbo, it definitely helps out a lot. And so at the end of the day, it feels different to drive, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. The Honda Civic Si is very, very good at being a car for the time. The EG Civic was a fun, buzzy car when turbochargers didn't really exist and when lightweight cars were all the rage. The ninth generation was a great, fantastic driving car when cars were bubbly and ugly. And now the Civic Si is a great car when turbocharging is very, very common. And so trying to compare this car to the older generations is only going to give you a headache and some heartache. It's all about perspective, much like the Star Wars prequels. If you went in to watch those movies, having seen the originals growing up, and now you're almost middle-aged and you have taxes to pay and real life consequences, yeah, you're gonna hate the prequels. But I grew up with the prequels and I loved them. They were fantastic movies. It's all about perspective. So don't write off the Civic Si because it doesn't feel like the old ones. As a matter of fact, jot this down because you're gonna wanna look for one of these. And my hat is tipped in perpetuity to Honda for even producing a car like this and allowing base models even to get the stick shift. That's how I feel about this car. This car is incredibly good. And the Honda Civic Si has been the car of a generation for multiple generations. If it ever does go hybrid or electric, I think it'll still be the car of those generations too. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Jelani for letting me take out his Civic Si. I was so incredibly excited to drive this car. He's been absolutely fantastic to work with. Such a cool and down to earth guy. And I cannot thank him enough. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.